go for main engine start. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. All three engines up and burning. 2, 1, 0, and liftoff, the final liftoff of Atlantis on the shoulders of the space shuttle. America will continue the dream. As most are no doubt aware, the Space Shuttle Atlantis has embarked on its final mission and the final mission in the entire shuttle program. For most of us, it is the end of an era. Whereas children of my parents' generations had such heroes like John Glenn and Neil Armstrong to look up to, children of my generation had such heroes as Andy Thomas and Bruce McCandless. Sadly, these names are probably not as well known. Most people have no doubt seen this famous photo of Bruce McCandless on his historic spacewalk, but unless told how many of them know it is Bruce, or that it is history's first untethered spacewalk, the first use of the jetpack used today, or that it was taken during one of Challenger's space missions. But show that same generation a photo of Buzz Aldrin and they instantly recognise what it is. The Space Shuttle has certainly made some great accomplishments over the past few years. It has launched such scientific breakthroughs like the Galileo Jupiter probe and the Magellan spacecraft that used radar to map the never before seen surface of Venus. And who could forget the Hubble Space Telescope? These Space Shuttle achievements have constantly been overshadowed by the claimed success of its predecessor and the Shuttle's even more obvious shortcomings. Seeing astronauts assemble the International Space Station has become such a common routine that the media barely takes any notice. The media might do a full-fledged report on the launch, docking and the touchdown, and if they're lucky, a few passing mentions of the spacewalks that occurred in between. The mere fact that the shuttle crews have spent this long building the space station is testimony to how far behind NASA is. Few people realise this, but back in the 70s, NASA already had a space station. In 1973, a Saturn IV-B stage was converted to the Skylab space station. Skylab accommodated Apollo crews on three separate occasions. To extend its lifespan by five years, the decision was made to have the shuttle dock with Skylab in 1979, attach a booster rocket and propel the station into a higher orbit. But due to delays, the shuttle was never launched until 1981, a good three years after Skylab re-entered the atmosphere, and their proposed space station Freedom never got off the drawing board, let alone the ground. Having no station of their own, NASA resorted to joint missions with the Russians, in which shuttle astronauts would stay aboard the Mir space station. But my father most bitter pill to swallow, after spending 13 years building the station, which in turn required 11 shuttle flights, NASA plans to deorbit the space station in 2016, or five years from now, the exact same amount of time that NASA intended to extend the lifespan of the Skylab using one single shuttle flight. This begs the question, was it really worth it? If you spend 13 years building the damn thing, one would hope for a much longer lifespan. At least Obama plans to deorbit the space station in 2020. Consider also, the ISS only cost us $160 billion to build. And this is not even counting the $145 billion that has been spent on the entire shuttle program. The Apollo program only cost $135 billion in 21st century currency. You'd think that if NASA and their international partners had all that money to play with, they would have spent it on something more worthwhile, like a permanent base on the moon, or visits to other planets. Around the time Neil Armstrong supposedly walked on the moon, plans for a manned mission to Mars by 1982 were already on the drawing board. Regardless of whether the Apollo landings were real or fake, I doubt anyone would disagree that the Space Shuttle program was a giant leap backwards. For that matter, so are its successors. NASA's new spacecraft is derived from the abandoned Orion capsule and is called the Multipurpose Crew Vehicle. I'm not impressed. For one thing, it's pretty much the Orion capsule with a new name slapped on it. The shuttle, despite all its flaws, was a winged spacecraft designed to gently glide down to the surface of the Earth. Capsules, on the other hand, plunge straight down into the water and experience greater g-forces during descent. I mean, a minute ago space planes were the way of the future, now they've gone back to capsules? 
Besides which, until these birds even fly, NASA will be reduced to send their astronauts up as taxi passengers and send their resupplies to the station via post, paying Russia rides aboard the Soyuz and paying the private company SpaceX to deliver cargo to the ISS. And apparently, NASA is supposed to be the leaders in space exploration. Furthermore, under the Obama plan, there will be no manned return to the moon, and the first manned flights to an asteroid won't be until 2025, with a manned Mars landing being at some unspecified date after 2035. And what's Obama's reasons for skipping the moon? It's not because of deadly radiation, and it's not because of budget. Apparently, it's because going to the moon is a case of being there, done that. I understand that some believe that we should attempt a return to the surface of the moon first, as previously planned. But I, I, I just have to say uh, pretty bluntly here, we've been there before. Buzz has been there. There's a lot more of space to explore and a lot more to learn when we do. Quite frankly, at the rate the US government constantly proposes ambitious plans for space travel and then turns around and cancels them, perhaps these promises will also not be fulfilled. After all, the years 2025 and 2035 are long after Obama will be out of office. When I was a child, we were talking about going back to the moon in 2010. I wouldn't be surprised if they are still talking about returning to the moon during my grandkids' years. And until NASA and the US government quits making these ridiculous excuses for not going back and addresses the real problem, we are never going to get to the moon for real. In retrospect, the shuttle has certainly made some great achievements, but its flaws in many ways outweigh those achievements. The Space Shuttle program was just the first step in a giant leap back to the Stone Age. Still, it's been a wild ride, and to the crew of STS-134, Godspeed.